In the beginning, our planet, the Earth we call home, was nothing but a large fireball drifting in an expanse. Until the miracle of life began, water flows throughout our planet in the form of rain, springs, waterfalls and oceans. All life here is linked, nothing is self-sufficient, and our Earth relies on the balance where every being has a role to play and exists only through the existence of another being. When keystone species are lost, ecosystems begin to collapse. This is now known as a trophic cascade. Over 150 years ago in Northern America, the world's first protected national park was established, now known as Yellowstone National Park. This ancient and mysterious lands holds exquisite and rare wildlife spread throughout dynamic landscapes, scattered with dormant volcanoes and hydrothermal marvels, surrounded by lush forests with rivers bounding in aquatic life. By the late 1900s, the landscape had tragically shifted. River erosion and habitat loss alarmed researchers, but most perplexing of all were the missing trees. Biologists Professor Bill Ripple from Oregon State University and Professor Eric Larson from University of Wisconsin investigated the loss of aspen and willow trees in Yellowstone. At first they suspected climate change to be the effect of the missing trees. However, this was demissed because if this was the case, trees throughout the northern Rockies should be disappearing at a correlative rate. Then they suspected it to be due to the control of forest fires as aspen trees thrive after being burnt. However, the huge forest fire of 1988 produced little to no new trees. Ripple and Larson began having a closer look at individual trees, exposing that aspen trees had not regenerated since the 1930s. The only significant ecological change made to the park in that time period was that by 1930, Yellowstone's last remaining wolves were eradicated from the park. In less than 58 years, there was a recorded government-funded culling of over 81,000 wolves in Montana alone. Due to the absence of hunting wolf packs, the elks had nothing to hunt them, and as a result, their population size had almost tripled within the first three years after the removal of their natural predator. As the elk began to linger in vegetation-rich areas alongside riverbanks, the plants were no longer able to regenerate. This then led to the mass erosion of streams and the devastation of species that depend on them. Soil is a highly valuable resource to any ecosystem and as Yellowstone holds nutrient-rich volcanic soils, the loss of this asset not only polluted rivers but also killed most of its aquatic life. These ancient soils also put humans and other species at risk as mercury present in these deep stagnant volcanic soils are highly toxic. This caused a national epidemic. After a 20-year court species reintroduction debate, the first 14 wolves were reintroduced into Yellowstone National Park in 1995. Although few in number, the wolves started to have the most remarkable effects. The wolf impact begins with their kills. The carcass left behind means more than death as it breathes life into other species. Each wolf kill becomes a small epicenter for scavenger species and contains important nutrients for soils. Ravens and bald eagles come down to feed on wolf kills and are even known to lead wolves to elk herds. But most significantly, the wolves began to alter the behaviour of the elk. They were avoiding certain areas of the park such as along valleys and streams where there was low forest coverage that made them easy prey and almost immediately these places began to regenerate. Barren valleys began to flourish again when new cottonwood trees began reappearing that had once been absent for almost a decade. As soon as this happened, the birds returned. The number of songbirds and migratory species increased rapidly, which also caused the reappearance of native snakes and eagles. The number of beavers began to increase as the vegetation they depend on began to regrow. Beavers, a lot like wolves, are ecosystem engineers. They create habitat niches for other wildlife species. The dams they built in previously fast-flowing rivers began to slow, providing habitats for otters, muskrats, ducks, trout, salmon and other aquatic species. As well as the elk, wolves killed overpopulated coyotes. The result was that the number of native rabbits and mice began to rise, which meant that more hawks, more weasels, more foxes and more badgers had a food source. Even bears benefited from the reintroduction of wolves. 
as they fed off the leftover carcasses of wolf kills and their population size began to rise, also because there were more berries growing on the regenerating shrubs and due to the abundance of fish. What was baffling is that through the reintroduction of wolves, they changed the behaviour of the rivers. As the river banks began to stabilise, this allowed volcanic soils to build up and settle under the riverbed. This also nourished the aquatic life and in turn it benefited both native flora and fauna. The wolves had not only transformed the ecosystem of Yellowstone National Park, but also its physical geography. 